Research Dead. Today we're going to be talking about dividend stocks and compound interest. Keep in mind, before you buy up a bunch of dividend aristocrats, ask yourself a few questions. What is your investment goal? Is your portfolio diversified? What role would the dividend aristocrats play? Make sure your portfolio matches with your long-term goals. It's really important to know what your criteria is and then make sure your investments mirror that. Dividend aristocrats, known as ETF. If you've decided dividend investing makes sense for you, an easy way to get started is with the dividend aristocrat ETF. Here's how it works. An ETF or exchange trade, traded fund is basically an investment that tracks a specific group of stocks. In this case, that's dividend aristocrats. Whether it's an ETF or a fund, you are buying a basket of stocks. Every ETF is different, but a dividend aristocrat ETF might simply invest in all 65 companies, weighted equally, giving you exposure to the whole group without requiring you to invest in each company individually. ETFs are great because you get diversification and you'll own all of them. Make sure you look under the hood of any ETF before you buy. Yield isn't the only data point that's important. Pay attention to how the companies are weighted within and look at those companies' earnings and revenue growth. The more information you can gather before investing, the better. Dividend aristocrat companies with the highest dividend. Dividend aristocrats are known for the consistency of their dividends, not necessarily the high yield. A dividend yield is a ratio that tells the investor what percentage of the company's share price is paid out each year. Here are 15 dividend aristocrats that currently have the highest dividend. at and company known as T. Dividend yield is 6.93%. T row price. T R O W with 6.15%. Exxon Mobil X O M 5.80%. Chevron CBX 5.05%. ABV, ABBV, 4.91%. Illinois Tools, ITW, is 4.51%. People's United Financial, PBCT, 4.3%. Amcor, AMCR, 4.01%. Amcor, AMCR, 4.3%. 0.1%. Consolidation Edison, ED, 3.99%. Federal Realty Investment Trust, FRT, 3.54%. Kimberly Clark, KMB, 3.54%. Franklin Resources, DEN. 3.51%. Cardinal, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Cardinal Health, CAH, 3.44%. Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA, 3.42%. Leggett and Platt, LEG, 3.22%. Compounding is the ability of an asset to generate earnings, which are then reinvested or remain invested with the goal of generating their own earnings. In other words, compounding refers to generating earnings from previous earnings. Your investment is now worth $11,000 based on good performance you hold, you hold stock. Suppose you invest 10000 in Corey's truck company the, the first year. The shares rise 10%. Your investment is now worth $11,000. Based on good performance, you hold the stock in the second year. The shares appreciate another 10%. Therefore, your 11000 grows to 12100 Rather than your shares appreciating an additional $1,000, 10% like they did in the first year. They appreciated an addition $1,100 because the $1,000 you gained in the first year grew by 10% 10 10 too. If you extra polited the process out, the numbers have the potential to grow as your previous earnings start to provide the returns. In fact, $10,000 that returns 10% annually for 25 years would grow to nearly $110,000, and that's without investing additional money. Keep in mind that the examples presented throughout this paper are hypothetical, and actual returns will be different, much less predictable, and potentially negative. Interest is often compounded monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, with continuous compounding. Any interest earned immediately begins earning interest on itself. Albert Einstein allegedly called compounding interest the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. This is true partly because, unlike the trigonometry or calculus you studied back in high school, compounding can be applied to everyday life. The wonder of compounding, sometimes called compounding interest, has the potential to transform your working money into an income generating tool. Compounding is the process of generating earnings on an asset's reinvesting, reinvested earnings. To work, it it's, requires three things. The original investment remain invested, the reinvestment of earnings, and time. The more time you give your investment, the more you may be able to accelerate the income potential of your original investment. To demonstrate, Let's look at another example. If you invested $10,000 and it returns 6%, you will have 10600 in one year. <clears throat> 10,000 times 1.06% rather than withdraw the $600 gained, you keep it in there for another year. If you continue to earn the same rate of 6%, your investment will grow to $11,236. 10,600 times 1.06 by the end of the second year. Because you have invested that $600, it worked together with the original investment, earning you $636, which is $36 more than the previous year. This little extra may seem little peanuts now. But do not forget that you did not have to lift a finger to earn that $36. More importantly, this $36 also has the capacity to earn interest. After the next year, assume that same for 6% return. Your investment would be worth $11,910. $11,236 times 1.06. This time you earn $674 which is 74 more than the first year. This increase in amounts made each year is compounding in action.
investment earnings on investment earnings, and so on. This has the potential the potential to continue, assuming you keep invested and investment returns are positive. However, it is possible to lose money and investment returns are negative. So 10,000 at 6% 6 is 10,600. 10,000 600 at 6% equals 11,236. 11,236 at 6% equals $11,910. Starting early, consider two individuals. We will name them Pam and Sam. Pam and Sam are the same age. When Pam was 25, she invested $15,000, which returned 5.5% annually. For simplicity, assume the earnings were compound annually. By the time Pam reaches 50, her investment would grow to $57,200. 15000 times 1.055. Pam's friend, Sam, did not start investing until he reached age 35. So he was 10 years older than Pam. At that time, he invested $15,000, which returned the same 5.5% compound annually. By the time Sam reached age 50, his investment would grow to $33,487. So what happened? Both Pam and Sam are 50 years old, but Pam's investment earned $23,714 more than Sam's, even though he invested the same amount of money. By giving her investment more time to grow, Pam's investment grew by 42201 while Sam's investment grew by 18487 So the name of the game here is that the earlier you start, the more money you're going to make. And you're always going to want to reinvest. Never take your money out otherwise. So you want to keep your stocks so that they keep making compound interest or and dividend. And allow that money to keep making more interest. So that way your money keeps working for you. Until you're ready to draw it out like a 401k. Personally, dividends and compound interest have more potential to make more money than a 401k. Because instead of one rate, we have more options. You can see that both investments start to grow slowly and then accelerate as reflected. Pam's line becomes steeper as she's near her 50. Not simply because she has accumulated more investment earnings, but because these accumulated investing earnings have been occurring additional investment earnings. In another 10 years, Pam's line continues its steep ascent due to occurred investment earnings. At age 60, Pam's investment would have grown to around $97,000, while Sam's investment would have grown to around 57000 a 40,000 difference. The effect of compound interest depends on frequency. Assume an annual interest rate of 4%. If we start the year with $100 and compound only once, at the end of the year, the principal grows to $104. $100 times 1.4% equals $104. If 
we instead compound each month at 1%, we end up with more than $104 at the end of the year. Specifically, we end up with $100 times 1.033 at $104.07. The final amount is slightly higher because the interest compounded more frequently. This minor amount can really add up over the life of an investment. Compounding has the potential to positively impact the growth of your working money and maximizes the earning potential of your investments. But remember, because time and reinvesting make compounding potentially work, you should consider keeping the principal and earnings invested in order to benefit from the potential that compounding provides. So dollar cost averaging DCA is making regular scheduled investments into an investment fund over a long period of time. For example, investing in equal amounts on the 15th of every month, DCA has been an extremely com com controversial and hotly debated approach to investing. This applies both to practitioners and theoreticians, as well as internet discussion groups, which contain likely lively debates on the subject. With a fascinating mixture of beliefs, prejudice, opinions, facts, and statistics. So what are investors who believe to do? Read on to learn both sides of the argument. The good side. ECA makes sense. The, the idea of dollar cost average is initially appealing and makes a lot of sense. In a steady rising and volatile market, investors buy in at a low average price over time. In a falling market, the same investments will purchase a larger number of units. In all in all, regular investments have the potential to help investors manage the impact of market volatility. Regular investing can be a good thing and it is the only way many people can invest. So the discipline pays off in that sense alone. Furthermore, DCA allows you to do the opposite of another very controversial element of investing market timing. If an investor were considering investing in a lump sum from an inheritance, for example, and the market looks overheated or precarious for any reason, it may be prudent to dip drip feed into stocks. Also, a great advantage of DCA, says George Smith of MoneyMontleyPool.com. Blind dollar cost averaging March 2000 is that the, gent the gentle moves into the stock market means you can place yourself at a proper comfort level. Precisely when Smith wrote those words, a lump sum would have collided head on with a great dot com bear market. Even the otherwise skeptical Richard Williams and Peter Bacon writing in the Financial Planning Association Journal, Lump Sum Beats Dollar Cost Averaging, June 2004, agreed that DCA can reduce risk and potentially help avoid investing all the money at the market high. The bad side, no guarantees. The potential advantages undoubtedly prevail up to a point, but many experts on both sides of the Atlantic warn against regarding the approach as a cure-all. They say that it by no means guarantees better returns than lump sum investment. Furthermore, they stress that investors are not always protected effectively against volatile and falling markets. After all, investors who started their regular payments in 2000 had a pretty bad time until 2003. They would have kicked off with a downhill run and the odds are they would eventually have bailed out in the panic during the dot-com bear market. Some observers point out that in a long sideways and downwards market, DCA does not differ much from a buy and hold strategy. Even more skeptical 
commentators argue that at its worst, DCA is a little more than a marketing trick to convince people to hand over money regularly, ensuring trading commissions. Regular investing can be a lot better than no investing at all. If the choice is between investing $50 a month or treating yourself to an extra night at the town, it is clear which option has potential to help you through your old age. The ugly side, risk and return controversy. What evidence is there on the returns from the BCA? Williams Bacon make their position very clear, saying even without dividends and annuity investment into the S&P 500 and other indexes generally fall short of investing up front. This statement is <clears throat> this statement is based based on a methodolo methodological sound long term study over sixty five years. The historical findings are strongly in favor of investing a lump sum immediately, provided, of course, that you have a lump sum to invest. Also, writing in the FPA journal, Robert Altra and Thomas Mann, dollar cost averaging and Seasonal, seasonality, some international evidence from July in 2001 sum up what is truly an essence of the matter. The results of various studies suggest that DCA is neither as effective as, a, as the personal financial, excuse me, finance lecture claims, nor as suboptimal as the academic literature claims, the popular investment press tends to claim that DCA reduces risk, enhances returns. This would be wonderful, but the world of money is full of trade-offs, and it would seem more likely to be one benefit or the other, rather than both. DCA has tended to reduce risk, but frequently at the expense of returns. Dollar cost averaging is not an investment technique for all seasons. If you get the season right, you can win both ways. But as we know, not only does winter inevitability arrive, but the summertime blues can intervene long before that. So my whole point into getting into this subject was to point out the whole reason why I would only do compound interest and dividends. I don't really pay attention to all the other stocks as it's a slippery slope. Also, if that's something that you may be interested in, be careful of getting those fake brokers. There's plenty of them online. They'll, they'll try to refer you to somebody, trying to claim that they're a broker too, which is far from the truth. It's actually a fake broker. And what they do, is they use the software to separate you from your money. Um, they use a whole different platform, of course, to do this. But uh, yeah, just just make sure you do your research. There's people that lost at least eighty million dollars last year. If you like this video, please be sure to give a like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell icon so you get notified of upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.